Hi, this is Trenisha Cottrell, and <laughs> today I wanted to talk about Terry. And I know you're probably like, Terry, is that a person's name? What are you talking about? Okay, so listen, <laughs> what made me want to talk about Terry is because all day today, every single sermon, everything that I've been listening to has been talking about, though it tarries, it will not tarry, or though it tarries, wait for it, you know? And it's so funny because I think yesterday in the video, I said something about Terry. And then it's like all today, it's been nothing but Terry, Terry, Terry. <laughs> and so, so I was like, okay, this is uh, obviously this is the thing. And I was not going to do a video today. That's why I don't have a full face of makeup, even though I've said I've been, you know, that's the new thing that I've been trying to do. I was going to start doing a full face of makeup. And so I moisturized. I did my three step skincare program and then I hopped on this video. I got ready for bed. I put on like, you know, this, the whole satin, you know, set with the this just this random top because I was going to put it on with one of the tank tops. But I need to I think it might be in the dirty clothes. I don't know. But I didn't look. I just was like, okay, this shirt is hanging up. It was going to be a shirt that I might have possibly worn tomorrow, but I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to throw it on now and I'll just sleep in this because it's nice and comfortable. So that's what happened. And that's why it looks like this. And that's why I look a little different today because I I didn't even go in with the brush and like, you know, strategically, you know, brush and then do this with my brows. I just literally washed my face and then came on here. And this is just what it is. So you're just going to have to bear with me today with my normal face. So, you know, hopefully no one... <laughs> <laughs> feel some type of way and if they do like listen I have to I have to I have to adhere to what it is that God wants me to do before anything else so other people can feel how they want to feel but if God is saying this is where I'm supposed to be this is where I'm gonna be fresh face no makeup whatever you know <laughs> so this is just it is what it is I just I literally just moisturize put on like some you know, moisturizer and, you know, the whole like Vaseline thing for the certain parts. I even do that when I sleep just because I know like some areas of your body get more dry than the other, but no one, no one cares about that. But yet I go into detail about it. So, you know, like the elbows, I make sure that I moisturize my hands because your hands can get dry from washing them all the time. You know, I'll do like the knees, I'll do my feet, you know, stuff like that. And so I'll just try to make sure that everything has moisture on it. And then when I go to bed, you know, I'm nice and soothed and relaxed because everything's been taken care of. OK, so anyways, <laughs> as as I listen to this message about Terry, I think that, you know, sometimes God will give you what you need and not what you every time God will give you what you need and what not what you want. And so he knows that I had struggled over the weekend with you know, just having a moment of weakness where I was just kind of feeling like, well, maybe I'll go back to an ex, you know, since I'm just in this waiting season. And God really got on me so hard that it, it shut the whole thought process down. Like I, I, after God said that, I was like, you know what, I'm good. I'm gonna stay on the straight and narrow path. I'm gonna keep doing what I need to do. Because obviously, if God has something better for me, I don't want to deter I don't want to like get off track. I don't want to go on a different path than the one that God has for me. I want to make sure that I'm completely obedient to God. And so, <laughs> so I, God, what he put on my heart was, he was like, did I, so are you saying that I got you out of a toxic relationship just for you to go back into another one? And I was like, Oof. I mean, you know, you know, when somebody really about that life and, and they try to tell you what it is and what it's going to be. And God really talks to me like that. And that's exactly what I need because I don't need any sugar coated. I don't need any tiptoeing around the fact kind of, you know, thing. I need something that's raw, real. Like I need something that is going to be like straight up. And, <laughs> and, you know, some people don't like that because they want they feel like people just don't need to be like for real about whatever it is that they're saying. But I really respect any person who can be honest about what it is that they feel, want, whatever else. 
I mean, I'm not saying I want them to be cruel to me and, and say something rude and nasty just to try to hurt my feelings. But if somebody really feels a certain type of way, I want to know what they really feel. I don't want to try to guess what somebody is feeling. I don't want to try to guess what someone wants or doesn't want. I want to know, you know, like, and so like, that's what I respect about a, a lot of my family members as well. They will be for real with you, whether you like it or not, <laughs> you know? And so like, it's funny because a lot of them have been like, listen, you need to take a, a moment, a day to yourself, a week to yourself and just not focus on business stuff and just be like, because you're always doing something. And I'm, and it's funny because they were like, you got right out of, you know, the relationship and you were just on it every single day, doing something, always having a full schedule and not having like a, like I did do my me dates at the beginning once a month, but that was it. Everything else was just, you know, constant going. And I still, I still did self-care stuff once I started counseling. And then the the therapist had said that you can do me date or you can do stuff that is like self-care for 30 minutes a day, five minutes, 15 minutes, you know, as long as you get that time to just kind of self-reflect and really, really pay attention to yourself and take care of yourself. And so I did that, but they were like, listen, <laughs> the way that you've been going, you really need a week, like just some time to just focus in on you and not be so scheduled, not doing everything by, you know, certain time at a certain day, you know, or whatever else. But the schedule kind of helps me stay organized because I've always been all over the place. You know, like I've had goals or stuff that I want to do, but every time I set a schedule, it's like, okay, I know these things are going to get done. But I also hear what they're saying. Like it is good to just live life and not just have something that's planned just to kind of go go out and explore the world you know just have fun like that's what I did last Saturday in a way I I went to my class and I was like you know what I'm gonna go get my makeup done I'm gonna learn how to do makeup because you know everyone that I see online is doing their makeup and it's not like I want to fit in with other people but anytime I can learn a new skill or I can do something to improve upon myself. Like, I don't want to look like somebody else. I want to look like me. So if something is accentu accentuating my features, then I want to be able to utilize that for my life. And I'm not saying I will probably wear makeup every day. If God continues to tell me to just hop on a video, I'm just going to look like this. But, you know, every once in a while, it will be nice to just like know what I'm doing and to be able to do like full face of makeup you know, just for fun. And so that was really cool to learn. And the person was like really nice. They were really patient. They weren't like, oh, you shouldn't know how to do this. They were like, okay, so then we're going to do this. And then when we do this, we're going to go highlight. We're going to go in the T zone. We're going to make sure that we use a certain type of bronzer, a certain type of concealer. I'm going to, I'm going to teach you a few techniques that you can use daily or whenever you decide to do your makeup and it'll help you. So that way you don't have to worry about, you know, doing all of these things. You can kind of do a few things here and there that will help with a technique so that you can do a full face of makeup, you know? And so it was, it was just a really great experience. And I felt so good after the makeup thing. I was like, I'm going to go get a dress. And so this, the place that I went to had this sale. And if I remember, I will put a video. I mean, I will put a picture here, not like the other video where I said, I'm going to put it here or here. And then nothing was there because I, I completely, I got so busy, like this is what my family's probably talking about, but I got so busy that I didn't have an opportunity to put the, the photos in the video, like to go back through the whole stream and post the videos and put like, I, I just didn't have enough time to do it. And so, and I know some people are like, you have time, you just are doing something else, but no, like <laughs> I literally had no time. Like I, I have some personal stuff in my life that I'm taking care of at this time as well. And so that personal stuff is super important. I can't just be like, oh no, I'm not going to help out with this because I got all these things to do. I'm going to do whatever I can. You know, as long as I'm here, I'm going to be doing something, you know, to help the person who needs the help. And it's not like a, a selfish thing. It's not like I'm, I'm wearing myself thin. It's like when I run out of time, I run out of time. I did everything I could do and that's it. I don't stay up usually I don't stay up late. Sometimes I do. I, I used to, I used to do this thing right at the very beginning or when I started this other job that was kind of stressing me and I felt like I didn't have any time for my dream work. I would leave work and 
I, I would go to sleep early during the weekdays and every Friday and Saturday night, I would stay up until two or five o'clock in the morning working on my business because during the week, I didn't have an, an opportunity to do any of the things that my, my heart was into, you know, or any of the things that I was super passionate about, or that was part of my purpose. And so it felt like I was living li- like life was living me, like life had me, I didn't have a life, you know? And so now I really have a, like a, a hard stop at certain times. So when it's nine 30, that's it. It's time to go to sleep. It's time to do whatever it is I have to do. And if it's a late night, usually it's like 1030. And I'm like, okay, it's time to go to sleep. I have things that I have to do. If I want to meet, be in the 5 a.m. club, I need to be asleep by 10 or 1030 because I want to make sure I have plenty of time to wind down and get my body the rest that it needs, you know. And it's funny because, you know, at the beginning, I was like, wake up at five and I I would get up at five and it would be like, OK, well, I didn't start until five, ten, five, fifteen. And or I would get right up, but it would be five, fifteen, five, ten, you know, or five oh five, because I would sit there and the alarm would go off and I'd be like, OK, I got to get up right away. And I felt like I was just there like one minute and really it was four minutes. And I was like, what was I doing for four minutes that it took me that long to get up? up? Like, you know, so stuff like that would happen. And and God really put on my heart, hey, it's not about 5 a.m. It's about you you being intentional and you giving yourself enough time. Like, don't wake up at seven o'clock when you got to leave at 730. You need to be waking up at five, 530 or six. So you have an hour and a half to get up, do your whole hour thing you know, take a shower, get ready and leave. Don't just try to squeeze all of that into 30 minutes because it's because it's not enough time and you'll be rushed and you'll end up late. At least that way you can prepare and you can get ready ahead of time and definitely pick out your outfits the day before. It saves you so much time. (laughs) And if you're like me, you'll waste something on your shirt in the morning. So Definitely pick out, like when you pick out your outfit, think of a backup thing in case something is waste on your shirt or your pants or whatever. Sorry. (laughs) I don't know why that happened. (laughs) But anyways, so when I had my moment of weakness on Saturday and and I got my makeup done, I felt all good. I ended up getting a dress for $14. Yes, Macy's had a sale. And I I didn't do it intentionally. I just kind of went with the flow. And as I put on this dress, I got someone suggested a place or another place. And I said, oh, I think I'll choose the second place. And so I ended up going there and it was not my my scene at all. <laughs> it was uh, it was definitely different. And I'm not getting on the place or anything like that. But it was more like it wasn't something that that I would normally it, it wasn't. I'm trying to say it in the most respectful way. It was a place where maybe in a different season of my life and with another group of people, I may have been at a place like that. But at this stage in my life, I knew that wasn't my scene. I knew I needed to go where I was, where I was valued and not where I was just, uh, you know, tolerated or whatever. Like I needed to be somewhere where it was more of my scene. And so I went, ended up going to this place and it's like a restaurant. They ho- they house events there. They have upstairs area that's kind of like open and you can sit out on the balcony and you can eat there or whatever else. And so I sat downstairs and they had a person come in there and they played the guitar. They had some acoustic guitar music that was kind of like a neo soul slash, you know, our, um, when people do like country music or they do like pop and they do acoustic version, it's like that. And so it's like got this whole neo soul kind of vibe to it. And so the guy was singing and I was just sitting there, you know, by myself and just, you know, just enjoying the scene. And then I met this, this young lady who was a little bit older than me. And she's like, Oh, you should come to this place. My friend owns. And I was like, okay. So I ended up going, just going with the flow and, you know, we talked, we danced, we had, we had a lot of fun. We exchanged numbers. And then I went home. She was like, oh, we should go to this other place. And I was like, no, I, I got to get home because it, it got real late, real fast. <laughs> and I was like, 
I don't want to be out super late because I had church the next day. And I really didn't want to be that person that goes out, makes an excuse because I'm tired and I say I can't go to church. Like church didn't start until 11. So I needed to make sure I was home. I took a shower because I take a shower before I go to sleep. And I, I had enough rest to get up in the morning to do my yoga and everything else that I do. I do yoga while I listen to Dappy T Keys. If I remember, I will put Dappy T Keys link for his YouTube videos down below so that you can go watch it because it will bless your soul. Like, seriously, it's that thing that when I was going through the worst time of my life, it kept me peaceful. It kept me kept my mind focused on God. It allowed me to just feel like I was in the moment instead of worrying about the things around me, you know. So if you get a chance, definitely check him out because, I mean, his channel has grown a lot since then. And he appreciates every single person that is that is subscribed that has you know followed him whatever else you know because it literally helped me in like one of the darkest moments of my life you know and so <laughs> I know so <laughs> there my family the main main reason behind the story is my family is saying that I need to just be more go with the flow sometimes and not just so scheduled and I agree. I think that sometimes I do need to have a moment or maybe not put as many things on my plate. Like if God is saying, do this thing, maybe I need to just only focus on that. And then anything else that I do is just going to be something else. You know, it's not going to be a, I do it every single week. Like I know for sure I will definitely be at church on Sunday or dialing in. I know I will be in Bible study on Wednesday. You know, I'll be dialing in the Bible study on Wednesday because that's how we do it right now. And I know for sure the ICS, I will be definitely doing that every Thursday. And on Saturday, if I don't continue on with the classes that I'm taking, because the classes were just until I went to this thing for my parents, they're renewing their vows or whatever. And so it's so it's gonna be so beautiful. I'm gonna I can't wait. I might cry. I'm not gonna cry, but <laughs> I'm not gonna cry in front of anybody. I might, you know, be like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> you know, and my mom is so gorgeous, like one of the most beautiful women in the entire world. And so it's just gonna be, oh, it's gonna be a tearjerker, but I'm gonna hold it together. <laughs> and so yeah, so on Saturdays, I might end up switching the Saturdays. And instead of doing that, I might just do me, you know, I might just because every other Saturday I have my daughter or however it ends up falling. And so I'll probably go skating. We'll do skating on Saturdays like we usually do or whatever else. And then the other Saturday will be a day that I'll just dedicate to, you know, doing something fun. It doesn't have to cost money. It doesn't have to be something that I pay for every time. It doesn't have to be something extravagant. It could just be something like, I love being out in the world. I like just being on the beach, looking out at the water. I like, you know, seeing the sunset or sunrise, looking at the stars, you know, things like that, where I can just take in all of God's creations around me. Or even like if I go see a building or something, or go to what see someone's artwork or someone that's super talented to support them like I like doing stuff like that and so for my time by myself I might just go to an art gallery and it might be an art gallery that's hold, housing an event and they have uh, hors d'oeuvres or something you know I might do something like that or I might go do a picnic in the park you know or somewhere and or just explore area in the town that I live in or somewhere else that I haven't been before because they have this pottery thing that's downtown in my area and I might do that. I might learn a new skill with that. I don't know, but I'm going to make it a point to do something that I really just, I want to do that's, that's different, that I can just enjoy the time that I get to spend, you know, just being myself, just enjoying the season of my life. And it's not about it being a single season. Like even if I'm in a relationship, I want to, I want to make sure I start today you know, taking care of myself and pouring into myself and not just overloading myself with so many things to distract me from the things that I don't have. I want to appreciate every single moment that God's given me, you know, and, and it's not that I would just be lazy and just, you know, watch a whole season or something. And I'm not getting on anybody that does that. But for my life, I want to make sure that I'm doing something intentional. And that's kind of the reason why I overload myself so much, because 
I don't want to let any second, you know, minute or day pass by where I feel like, oh, I could have done this, but I didn't do it because I spent my time doing blah. You know, I want to make sure that every day of my life is intentional, but I also want to enjoy my life as well because I know God wants me to be about that God life, but he, he, God absolutely wants us to be happy and enjoy the fruits of our labor. Like what is the point of working so hard and being so humble and being so, so, you know, precise with the things that you're doing in life and being in intentionality and, you know, focusing in on God, if you're not going to enjoy any second of your life. You know, I, I really do enjoy the work that I do with my business. I think that's why it's hard to, to put a line there, like to actually put a stopping point or to like not be doing it or helping somebody because it's, it's inside of me. You know, when I see somebody even out and about, I want to speak life into them. When I see somebody going through something and they're like, I don't know what to do. I want to help them. You know, when when I learn something, I want to show other people what I learned. I want other people to learn from my missteps. I want people to be able to to do all of the things that God purposed for them to do and, and to not think that they are less than anything. Like I want them to know they are exactly who God created them to be and they can do anything they put their mind to. Like that, that I feel that deep down, like the passion for something like that is so deep inside of me. It means so much to me. So when I think about going a day without doing something like that, I can't imagine it, you know? And, and even when I'm doing stuff, you know, just for fun, like I went out, and on Saturday and I just kind of did my own thing and even when I was there I was speaking life into everybody around me because it's just something that I I love to do you know it's my purpose I don't want any person to ever feel like they're worthless or ever feel like they don't deserve everything God has for them I don't want any person to ever feel like they have to stay in a relationship just to prove to their family and friends that they're wrong about the person that they're with I don't want any man to just stay with a woman because, you know, she has money or, you know, stay with her, even though she's talking to him like crap. I want I want every man to feel as respected as they should be. And, you know, for the guys that do like horrible stuff to women and everything else, like, I mean, when I say horrible, I mean, like you just be dogging them out hard, like. I know you're saying, well, okay, well, I'm gonna keep doing it because she keeps talking to me like this. Definitely take some accountability. And also, even at that point, I still don't like seeing people talk to people like that. It's just something on the inside of me feels uneasy when I see people doing stuff like that. And I know it's a lot about accountability. Like for me, I knew I had to take accountability for my actions and know that Okay, I'm the person who chose to stay in this relationship for 15 years, for five years, for however long, you know, the relationships are that we decide to stay in. You have to, you know, I was thinking this earlier and please don't take it offensively, but we really give these guys way too much credit. Yes, I paused intentionally because I wanted you to take a moment and think about it. Like when you're saying, oh, yeah, he did this, he did that, but he isn't treating me like this, but he isn't doing that this way. And he's not this and he's not that. The person who you're with, you should be proud that you're with them. If you're not proud that you're with them, then why are you with them? Also, if you feel like you have to talk down to them, disrespect them, yell at them, cuss at them, fight them, that's probably not the person for you. Your mental health is so much more important than the person that you're with. And I know sometimes it gets lonely or whatever else it is that you might be going through. But I promise you, you deserve way better than that. And you have to start loving yourself. And I know there's going to be a lot of women that say, I love myself. I look good. I do this. I do that. And I understand that you can buy makeup. I understand that you can put all the clothes on that you want to buy. You know, you can probably afford for anything. Or maybe this guy is affording for it for you. But on the inside, how do you really feel? If you feel broken, if you, your peace is disturbed, if you don't feel joy every day, like even through adversity, that's not the person for you. You definitely need God more because when I'm in God's presence, I feel peace and joy no matter what the situation is. You can see me on here crying and I still feel peace and contentment with my life. It's because of God, you know, and I really, really want 
every person to just start believing in themselves, to really know their worth and understand that, listen, you don't have anything to prove to anybody. I promise you that. I know it might suck to hear that I told you so. You don't even have to say you broke up with them. You just need to just, if if that's not healthy, it's not, if it's not healthy for your body, for your mental health, like when I tell you <laughs> my hair was going through a struggle <laughs> when I was not healthy, emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever you want to call it. Like my hair was just, I mean, like it was shedding a lot, <laughs> like. I have a lot of grays now. You probably can't tell, but I really do have a lot of grays. It looks like I have gray highlights in my hair. Like the bags underneath my eyes were so, so big. Like I just, you could, my whole body like breaking out all over my face, like my skin. It just, it was a whole thing because I wasn't taking care of myself and I was letting, you know, me being in a relationship be more important than my physical health, more important than my mental health, you know? And nothing is more important than your mental health. Nothing that you could could have in this life is more important than your mental health. So if you ever feel like you got to turn into somebody else to be with somebody else, don't be with them. If you ever feel like you got to raise your voice, don't be with them. If you ever, And I don't mean like you just are passionate because you really care about something. I mean, you're screaming at the top of your lungs. Don't be with them. Like you need to definite we as a whole because I don't want to single anybody else anybody out and make them feel like I'm just pointing the finger at people saying all the things that they need to do no this is something everybody in the entire world like myself included need to be doing we need to be taking accountability we need to be acknowledging the fact that hey we are the ones that decided to stay in this relationship they're going to act however they're going to act because they already showed you who they who you are who they are and like Maya Angelou said, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. You don't have to try to make them into somebody else because only God can change a person. You are just a person who can influence them. And I got that from TG, but also because, you know, throughout life, really, if somebody doesn't want to become better, they're not going to be. There's nothing, there's no trick. There's nothing that you can do that could ever change someone into something else. Their core, who they are at their core is who they're going to be. It is up to God to be, to really change their life. Not you. You are, you are a human being. You're not God. You know, and sometimes we want to help people so much that we, we really think that we can just make someone be something they're not. And we can't do that. We can only make them be who they are, you know? And so (sighs) I wrote a couple notes because I knew I was going to get off track. (laughs) So, so I knew I was going to get preoccupied. So I wrote down a couple things. So the pastor, he was preaching earlier and he was just talking about, you know, having faith, even when you're finishing, you know, whatever it is that God put on your heart for you to do, or when you're in the journey or whatever else. And he says, sometimes you can grow weary in doing well and you feel like, okay, well, this is taking so long. This is, this is, why am I doing this? It seems like I'm doing it for no reason, whatever else. And he said something. (laughs) He started talking about Ishmael and Isaac. And he said that when you are impatient with waiting, you decide to settle for Ishmael. Ishmael is settling. You know, if you don't know the story, definitely look it up and do the research on your own, because I really feel like every person, when they are trying to interpret the Bible or when they're learning about the Bible, should learn the stories for themselves and definitely figure out what it is, what it means to you and learn as much as you can so that you can implement it in your life, you know, in the right ways. And Isaac is waiting. That's when you are patiently waiting. You're graciously waiting. You're you are in contentment in the season that you're in because you know that God has better for you. You're not willing to just settle for something less just because, (laughs) you know, you're impatient with the waiting process. And so (laughs) he he gave this joke that I thought was so funny, but it was like, it's so true, especially for 
like while I'm in the single season, while I had that moment of weakness for a second on Saturday, right, right, like right after the thought, then God had, you know, the one message come through and then he was like, oh, so I brought you out this toxic relationship for you to go back into another one. And I was like, oh, um, where are we headed, God? Okay, I'm going to stay right there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so the preacher said, you think that this person is Boaz. And for y'all that don't know, look up the story of Ruth. Ruth was this woman whose husband had passed away. She ended up going and she was working in the field. She was doing different stuff. She was taking a bath, but what I saw her and he decided that she was going to be his. I mean, not taking a bath. She was doing, she was serving and doing the things that she was supposed to be doing. And Boaz saw her and he decided that she was going to be his. And he was, so a lot of people think of Boaz as this person who's like, the perfect spouse or whatever, the perfect person that you're supposed to be with. They're the person that treats you the way that God always intended for you to be treated. And so <laughs> he said that because you're impatient, you think that this, this person who you thought was Boaz, but really they're Ishmael. Really, they, they're a hot mess. Really, they are nothing that you want. But you are so ready to be with somebody, so ready to rush into a relationship, so ready to have a warm body, anybody, you know, that you are just willing to settle for Ishmael when God has so much better for you, when he has Isaac, when he has a Boaz, when he has all of these things that you, your heart desires. When, and when I say that, please read the scripture front through and through. Don't just say that. Don't just take out that little snippet and then be like, oh, he's going to give me the desires of my heart. Listen, <laughs> let me break it down real quick, a real quick like iteration of it. And so <laughs> when God says that he will give you the desires of your heart, it's because you will be focused on him. When you are content with your life, when you are grateful for the season that you're in, when you're thankful, when you are living the life that God intended for you to live, living in your purpose, when you are focused on him and what it is that he wants for your life and not just what you want for your life, your desire will change. You will start to want the things that God wants for you instead of just the things that you want. So when God says he will give you the desires of your heart, he's giving you what he knows that you need, not just what you selfishly want. So I had to break that down because so many people say it and they run with it and they just kind of go, yeah, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And people are like, yes, I want a million dollars. I want this man right here. I want this job right here. I want this car. And God's like, you aren't a good steward of a thousand. You're not a good thousandaire. I'm not about to make you a millionaire. God's like, you don't even work in the job that you have. You are still in time. You're still in papers. You're, you're not even taking advantage of the season that you're in in this job so you can learn how to be a good steward of the position that you're in so you could be helpful and serving in the position that I've already placed you in. Why would I give you your own business or take you into another level where you can be another lazy worker? You know, <laughs> sorry, I'm not just trying to say it like that, but I'm just saying like, this is how I, in my mind, how God is thinking, because we really be asking for stuff and we're not even the thing that we are in the season that God has already blessed us with, you know? And you ask him for this man, then this man is not grace for you. He's grace for Jessica. You know, like, <laughs> if your name's Jessica, it's another Jessica. But listen, because you're thinking that because he seems like a nice guy and he does, he can quote a scripture and maybe he drives this car and you're like, he's successful and he's, he's biblical and he looks good. And you're like, this is the person that I want. And God's like, but you don't know that he got this weird thing that he does <laughs> that you are not going to be okay with but you're willing to overlook that because of the outside outward appearance he's not even feeding your soul he just knows a script a scripture and the adversary knows the scripture you know any person i know people that are believers and unbelievers and know a quote from the bible so that does not mean anything you know what is his personal relationship with god the car that he's driving, is he being a good steward or is he going in debt just to drive a car to get girls like you? You know, like you got to really think about is are you impressed by this guy because of what he's driving or what drives him? You know, because what drives him is more important than the things that he's driving because his vision will take you further than his than his car will. You know, the car is going to run out of gas, but his vision will continue to to go forward throughout his entire life, especially if he's focused on God, you know. And so we really have to think about the things that we are asking for 
and know that God wants better for us. It's not just like he's withholding this amazing man because he feels like you don't deserve it. He wants to give you the desires of your heart and the desires of your heart are his desires. He wants you to be treated well, like Christ loves the church. He wants you to be appreciated and honored and respected, treated the way that he always intended for women of God to be treated. He doesn't want you to be trashed out, dogged out, ignored, you know, breadcrumb, all the other colloquialism and cliche terms that we've come up with in this society. He wants you to be treasured. Don't you know that you're more precious than rubies? <laughs> so start acting like it. Stop acting like every guy needs to pick you. You only need one person to pick you because <laughs> the goal is for somebody to choose you, to find you. If every person is finding you, the person whose grace for you is not going to be able to, to see you through the crowd of, of guys that's surrounding you. You know, I think that's why eat, no matter how many men I meet, and this is not like a toot my own horn. This is not like a anything like that. This is just me putting it in perspective. I think this is why I can meet so many men and none of those are, are a good fit or none of those are equally yoked because the guy who God has a grace for me is going to see my value. He's going to love me the way that Christ loves the church. Maybe not right away, but he's going to see that I'm the person who he should be trying to get to know. He's going to really be intentional with trying to get to know me. I... <laughs> I don't want to say feel because I hate, I don't really like to say feel in, in a God and God in the same thing, but I use it a lot because I'm in my feels all the time. And so, <laughs> but, you know, I just, I really feel like when it's God, you know, you know, like I will know without a shadow of the doubt, of a doubt that it's God. I'll know that this person is the person. Like when God puts a yes on my heart, I know when it's kind of like, eh, or God doesn't give me an answer. I'm like, okay, this is not it. This is not where it is. I know this is what I want, but I know this is not what I need, <laughs> you know? And so I really have to be conscientious, conscientious about, oh my goodness, my nose is itching. Sorry. <laughs> I have to make sure that I'm conscious about the decisions that I'm making in my life. And I have to make sure that I'm doing what's right by God. I need to make sure that this person is who God grace for me and I'm grace for them. I can't just make myself grace for somebody who is going to be so bad for me. <laughs> like <laughs> one time, mm, I don't know if I should go into detail about this because I really should get out off of here because I have probably a good 15 minutes to do the thing that I was going to do and go to bed. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. <laughs> Every night I'm like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to eat. A bowl of popcorn and and you know watch the end of my show that has like a good 10 minutes on it and every night I run out of time and I gotta go to bed so it is what it is but listen <laughs> I really do feel like when it's God I'll just know I feel like when it's God it won't be a question about it I won't have to wonder if this person is for me I won't have to you know it won't be I don't want to say inconsistent. It'll be what God wants it to be. Let me just put it that way, because I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how the person is going to be, but I know that I'm not going to feel like I'm unappreciated. I know. And when I say unappreciated, I mean like, OK, this person doesn't know me, but I won't feel like I have to I have to trade my mental health to be with somebody. You know, I'll feel like I can be content and where I am without feeling like this person is driving me crazy because they don't know where they're headed, you know, or they can't leave me because they're not going anywhere or they don't have a vision for their life. It'll be somebody who really, really can do all of the things that God would need for me to have in my life. And I would be able to do all the things that God needs for them to have in their life. Like I have this, this thought in my head, I don't know how true it is, whatever else. And I, and I hope, and I pray that this is what happens. But when God sends up the person that's for me, I want to appreciate that person and I want to respect that person from day one until I take my last breath or whichever one of us. <laughs> that is not a funny thing. But if you know me, I laugh in awkward moments. And so I didn't. That was just it was a thing. So I don't know who's calling me. I don't even know who this person is.
It could be anybody. I don't even recognize that number. Hmm. But anyways, it'll be somebody that I, I truly, I want to respect the person that God has grace for me from the day that I meet them until the day that one of us takes our last breath. And I say it like that because I don't know if it's going to be like, is it the notebook? I don't know. I saw like one scene clip from one movie and it was like, they were so in love that they died at the same time. I don't know. But I mean, I'm not saying I hope anything like that happens. Listen, I'm gonna stop talking because obviously I'm getting tired and I'm starting to just say random things. So this is all about intentionality and helping people. This is not about (laughs) anything else. So in conclusion, when you get weary, make sure you stay focused on God. Don't grow weary in doing well. And although it tarries, it will not tarry because it will not tarry if you wait. And when I say that, people always get confused because they're like, everything in the Bible is a contradiction. Listen, it's not a contradiction. You have to study and you have to learn what it actually means. So tarry is like, it's like, okay, for us, because it's been a long time, because we've been waiting, because we feel like, you know, it seems like we've been asking for this new job. We've been asking for this guy. We've been asking for this thing forever. And God hasn't given it to us. But God promised me this, but he still hasn't given it to me. Why hasn't he given it to me? And so then you grow weary and you start to doubt yourself and you start to doubt the fact that God is going to bless you with it. And you start to think, oh, maybe it's for everyone but me, you know, or whatever else. And so you are the person that tarries. God's promise is never tarry. If God promised you something, he's going to give it to you. You just have to be patient and wait on it. You know, so in life, (laughs) make sure you wait because you do not want to trade your Isaac for Ishmael or your Boaz for an Ishmael. You want to make and Why I make that that same face when I did that, though, like Ishmael, like, (laughs) no, but seriously, like if you know the plans that God has for you, his plans to prosper you and not to harm you then you have to patiently wait on God. I know sometimes it gets hard. I know sometimes it feels like inevitable for you, like any of the situations that you're in or like, like it's just impossible, you know, but God's promise is possible. Everything that God is going to do in your life is going to come to pass. Don't ever feel like God is going to skimp you on his promise. And the more time you spend with God, your desires will be His desires will become your desires. So patiently wait on God and love yourself. Like, don't ever feel like you're not enough. Don't ever feel like something's wrong with you. And if you do something wrong, acknowledge your flaws. You know, really, I don't want to say eat it, but like take accountability. Acknowledge the fact that you are the one that want to stay in this horrible relationship and then move on. You don't have to tell nobody. If you don't want to hear the I told you so's, then don't tell nobody about it. Just move on with your life. Focus on healing yourself. Focus on you. Enjoy every season that God has given you and take some time for yourself. Like I know sometimes it sounds counterintuitive, but I promise you I feel so much more refreshed when I've had a moment to do self-care or to just, you know, really love myself. Really just take a moment or a day for myself. It really makes me feel more rejuvenated and ready to go afterwards. So just know that whatever God has for you is for you and you're not going to miss out on anything. God is not just, it doesn't matter if everybody around you is blessed. If God's blessing you, you're going to be good to go, (laughs) you know? So the other day I had something happen to somebody and I had a moment where I was like, you know, I remember being in that position where I felt like this and, you know, I was so happy and and peaceful. I wish I could be in this position. And then God really laid heavy on my heart. Like, oh, so you, are you coveting somebody else now? That's what we doing. And I was like, no, I was like, and I, I quickly changed it. And I was like, if that person feels like this and they're getting blessed, then my blessing is in the neighborhood. Because the adversary will want you to feel like that. Like you're going to miss out on something. You're not missing anything. (laughs) God would never have you miss out on anything. You are getting every single lesson that you need to learn in this season. You're getting every single thing that you need to take you to the next level. God is never going to hold something back from you that is for you. And if God didn't give it to you in this season, he going to spin the block and let it come right back around. Like, and it might not be a man. It might not be a job. It might be something else. It might be one of those things. 
but do not <laughs> pray to God for somebody that is, is bringing out the worst in you or that is making your mental health horrible. Someone that is making you feel worthless because the person that you're with will make you feel appreciated. And I know I say that and you're like, you're single. What are you talking about? How can you even say that? Listen, anything that's bad that that just is has negativity or something nasty tied to it is not God. My God <laughs> is abundant. My God is the type of God that makes me feel love like no other man, person, child, that person, place, or thing could ever make me feel in my entire life. If God makes me feel like that and me loving myself is coming from God's love, the person that's a grace for me is not going to have any of that negativity all over them. They're not going to be making me feel like trash. They're not going to be making me feel unappreciated, unseen, unwanted, unsafe. I'm going to feel safe and seen with that person because that's how I feel with God. And know that person will never be God or take God's place. But I know, I don't know. I just, I have this thing inside my spirit that kind of just feels like that person, like, I don't know. You know, when it's the wrong person, you can kind of just tell. It's just like, mm, mm -mm. <laughs> this ain't it. <laughs> but I feel like when it's the right person, so I feel like, oh, wow. Okay. That's what it's supposed to be like. You know, I'm I'm not saying I'm going to feel butterflies and it's going to be a whole Disney movie. I'm just saying <laughs> that it's going to be graced by God. The peace that I'm going to feel over it. The confirmation that I will get from God, the discernment of the spirit and the person, you know, will allow me to know and make the best decision for my life in in co coordinates with the kingdom. You know, is this going to benefit the kingdom of God? Am I going to be at my healthiest to be able to step into my purpose and, and continue to be in my purpose? If the answer is no, that's not the person, you know. So that's what I kind of think of. So maybe that's a good guideline. <laughs> I'll let you know in the future, <laughs> you know, when I get the guy that God graced me with. And, you know, I'll tell you how I felt or how it was because, you know, feelings sometimes change. But I know God. And I definitely know what his no looks like or his his maybe not now looks like. And I also heard a yes from God. So when you hear a yes, it's it's no comparison. Like you'll be like, OK, well, I thought this maybe was a yes. But when you hear a yes from God, it's like, oh, OK. <laughs> I mean, are you sure? And he's like, yes. Like, I mean, why? Yes. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways i hope you have a good night thank you for watching this video i know it was longer than i intended it was going to be a 15 minute video but you know when the spirit moves and i gotta be obedient to god so i'm here and i hope that you pulled something from this and that it continues to bless you and that while you're in your waiting season that you continue to patiently wait don't please don't settle for anything less than god's best for you because you deserve everything god has for you